What's up, .NET developers? Do you love the command line and that's the place that you want to be? Well, in this video, we're going to go over the AWS CLI and how you can use it to manage your AWS resources all from that place you love, right here on AWS for the .NET developer. Hey, everybody. Just as I talked about in the intro, we're going to spend a good amount of time going through all the different things that you can do in the AWS CLI. We're not going to cover the entire scope of everything, but I'll be sure to put in a reference to all the different AWS CLI commands that exist down in the show notes. If you remember when we were going through our developer tools video, we walked through a bunch of tools, and one of them was the AWS CLI. We walked through installing the CLI, setting it up, and running a simple command. And I wanted to spend a little bit more time showing you what you can do and some of the different ways that you can access the AWS CLI. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and hop over to, I'm gonna go over and hop over to my command line. So uh, just for some tools uh, geeks out there, I'm using uh, the Microsoft terminal for Windows, which is a really, really cool uh, terminal that allows you to customize your command line experience. I'm also using Oh My Posh, which um, if you're not familiar with Oh My Posh, Oh My Posh is a command line sort of customizer tool. So right there I have, for instance, the default region of my AWS um, CLI instance and the directory that I'm currently in. Uh, but before we get into the actual command line on my machine, I want to show you some of the different ways that we can get to the CLI um, using some other paths. So one of the easiest ways or the simplest ways to get access to the AWS CLI is through the AWS Management Console. So in the situation where you're at the AWS Console like we are right here, I can simply go up here to that little box right there that looks like a little terminal window, click that. What that's gonna do is it's gonna spin up a terminal environment for me. And I can do something like AWS version, and it'll show me some information about it. So as you can see here, so uh, it's using 3.9 of it, of the, of Python and uh, it's running in Linux because that's what the cloud shell for AWS runs in. But I can do all sorts of other things too. Like I can AS configure, AWS configure here, and I can specify access keys and all those sort of things. We can go over what that looks like in a second. Um, but one thing that's really, really important to call out is that this particular instance that you have right here, and we'll zoom in a little bit, we'll zoom in, um, it already has your configuration already set up. So if I go AWS configure get, or let's do list, it'll list out the access key and secret in the default region for this particular environment. Because we spun it up from the context of the AWS console, it has all those inf all that information built in and it's using the container role. So we don't have to go through that AWS configure command. If we want to, we can specif specify another um, uh, profile we want to run under. So that's a really, really cool way to access it. Another really cool way, and hop back over to Mike, is by Docker. So if you um, have Docker desktop installed on your machine, you can actually spin up a container that run that has an instance of the AWS CLI running in it and run a particular command. So for instance, it, I can just show you if I'm running Docker version. So as you can see, I have Docker installed here. And if I paste Docker run uh, detach Amazon AWS CLI in the version, what this is going to do is it's going to spin up um, a AWS uh, CLI container based off of that particular image that I specified here, and it's going to give me all that information. So as you can see, I'm running a Linux container um, in WSL2 because I'm using WSL2 as my backend. So those are the two, I guess, um, other approaches that I, that I use for using the AWS CLI. For the most part, I use the AWS CLI from inside of or on my local machine using the tools that I love, like using on my Posh, like I mentioned, using the Microsoft Terminal for Windows. And let's just go through just a quick recap of what we do need to do to get this set up on our machine. So if you remember, I installed the AWS CLI in that tools video, and then I just went AWS, oops, AWS configure. Right, and then it, in that specific, in that situation, um, you provide an access key and an access token. And if you don't recall, let's just hop back over to the AWS console. And if I go to security credentials, I can actually walk through. Oops, click on users. Oops, I click on groups there. Click on users, tools. And I created a tools uh, profile with administrator access, and I generated some security credentials from there. So as you can see, they're right there. 
So if I hop back over to that, you can see this FXW. So I can skip over that because it's already pre-populated. I can specify the default region. So right now I'm in East US 2, um, which is on the East Coast. I live in the Seattle area. So let's just update this to East, US, East West 2. And then the default output is JSON, um, which is great because it gives us the ability to look in a JSON structure view of the output of some of our commands. But sometimes it's a little bit more readable to have it like in a table format. And you can also have it be YAML format and some other formats as well. But let's just go with table. And wait a second. So all my posh actually updated to use that new region that I specified earlier. So that's really, really cool. So one of the great things that I recommend playing around with, with Oh My Posh is you can actually specify and it'll show you what region you're running under so you don't get confused. So that's one thing that you can do. So let's just do something like AWS EC2 and let's just describe our regions, right? So regions, if we, we talked about this in our kind of intro to cloud concepts and intro to AWS in general uh, session, we, we talked about some of the different regions that exist. And these are all the regions that are set up on uh, my particular AWS account. So as you can see here, these are the names that we're probably going to be most familiar with. So, um, you know, East U or US West 2, we're on US East 2, or we're on, we're on West 2 now, we're on East 2 earlier. So again, some really, really cool things. So before I go into this, I want to call out as well. So the AWS CLI is just one of the many CLIs um, that exist if you're consuming or building or, or working against AWS resources. So there are a handful of other AWS services that have their own CLIs that are more or less kind of their wrappers or extensions of the AWS CLI. For instance, Elastic Beanstalk, which if you're familiar is a kind of a, a managed web environment that uh, has a CLI. Um, AWS Amplify has a, a CLI, and, and a bunch of other um, different uh, AWS services have CLIs as well. So definitely take a look at them. They're all, they're all on GitHub for able for you to look at the source code and install um, and go on your merry way. So let's that. Let's just take a look at some of the things that we can do as developers to build out some of our resources and manage them using the AWS CLI. All right, so let's go over uh, a few things with the AWS CLI that I think are kind of cool and we should definitely take advantage of. The first one of them, um, I don't know if you if you saw this, but when I went AWS EC2 um, describe regions, right, it had it in this JSON format. Like we can, I can actually customize what this looks like. So we can change this to um, output table, for instance. You notice how it's in color right here. Like, what, what if I don't want that color? I can actually just do that same thing and then set color to no, and then that will be, oops, color off, sorry. And now it'll be in that uh, simple black and white. So that's kind of cool. Another cool thing is you can actually have the AWS CLI, um, you can kind of go through an interactive mode. So if I go to AWS CLI and I go CLI auto prompt, spell right, and then set that to on, it'll then act start to go through all the different services. So if I go EC2 here, for instance, I can go EC2 and then describe, and then I can have all these different describes, and then let's just do back to describe regions, right? And then that'll auto complete that. So that's, that's pretty cool, but that only works like when you do one actual command, you can actually set an environment variable um, to have that always be running. So if I'm in power, I'm in PowerShell, for instance. So I need to set an environment variable. So that's at env, um, and then so the particular environment variable in this case is AWS CLI auto prompt, and then I just set this to on. And now going forward, every single AWS um, command will have that uh, prompt feature. So if I go that and hit enter, then I had that same experience, right? So then see EC2. And if I want to turn that off, it's just as simple as setting that to off. So that's kind of cool. So that, those are like two really, really helpful things. Let's actually take a look at how we can interface with some different AWS services using the CLI. So um, let's just try like S3. It's so like AWS S3 uh, for, for folks that might not be familiar. So a simple storage service. So think about storing files and different mechanisms like that. So you can list out S3s that you have. So 
those are some S3s that I have. Um, maybe I want to create one. So that's AWS S3 MB, and then I specify that S3 thing. So let's go Isaac 11 bucket, right? So this will actually create a bucket. So there you go. I can act, and then I can go back and I can list buckets again. And as you can see, that bucket, oops, I'm using back in. That bucket that I just created is right there. So let's actually upload something to this bucket. So I'm, I'm in PowerShell again, so I'm just going to create um, a, a text file. And I'm going to, I'm going to use this command here. So specifying an output file, file path, and then let's just call this hello.txt. So, right, so now I have a file and I can validate that that file actually has content in it by um, opening it up, right? So nothing super crazy there. So I actually can then go and take this file that I just created and I can upload to S3 and I can do that by AWS S3 CP and then I specify again my S3 bucket, which was, let's just actually go up here just to make sure I don't mess up the name of it. So AWS S3 CP, and then I just specify the first thing I do after that is I specify the file. So, so do there you go. So that's one uploaded to S3. So that's kind of cool. Um, then if I want to, I can actually then take that file and actually download it back. And that's the same thing It's just the same command, except you flip the source and the destination. So let's just call this hello to.txt. Cool. So if I take a look and then um, let's just do a get content again. And let's just do hello to. Oh, didn't work that time. All right. So, oh, and the reason why is because I didn't specify an endpoint there. So if I go hello.txt. There you go, downloaded it, and then if I do a get content, there you go. So that's cool. And then if I want to, then I can go ahead and remove that same bucket. I can do, so AWS RB, so RB bucket. And it's gonna say it failed. So that's because there's stuff in here. So I can actually then do a force, and it deletes the file in there and deletes that. So then if I go AWS S3 LS, that bucket is no longer there. So that's buckets, or that's uh, S3 buckets. So that's a f uh, easy way to store files and, and things like that. Um, now let's do go on to something like Dynamo Database. So Dynamo Database, if you're not familiar, is a, it's a key value pair based um, data source. So I can go dy AWS Dynamo DB and then list tables. List tables. And that's going to specify that I have one table there. And I can actually then describe that table. So if I go describe table, and then I specify a table name, and that table name is movies, this will show me the schema of that particular database. So as you can see here, um, the table name is movies, and there's a schema that has an ID um, and a popularity range. And there's 190 records in here. Um, if I want to, I could then write additional queries and scans or commands to actually get individual items here. Um, but you get the gist. So let's do one more thing. So the last thing I want to do is I want to actually connect up to uh, an Amazon EC2 instance, which is a VM, an infra infrastructure as a service offering. So I can go AWS EC2 and then describe... Describe instances. And this will give me all of the instances that I have here. I only have a few of them in this particular case. And I want to find, and I want to be able to remote into one of them. So let's just take a look. Um, so a couple of things that I've already done. I've already set up um, an SSH key. And I've added that to when I create that particular instance. Um, I can provide some documentation to that um, down below in the chat, in the, the notes as well. But in this particular case... I'm just going to scroll all the way down here, look for the instance that I'm looking for. Um, so, as you can see, there's a lot of metadata here for an Amazon EC2 instance, so that's great. So let's take a look. 
Actually, let's just do this. Let's just go up and do the top one. So the top one, all I really need here is I need this public DNS name. So I'm going to copy this. Oops. And then I can, let's just uh, get out of here. And then I can SSH. I have an interactive session of that SSH. And then I can specify um, a key pair that I have. So that's the secure key for that. And then I just specify the user, which is EC2 user. And then I just did that. And then I specify that. And now I'm SSH in there. So if I can do, so I could do something like an L name. Oops, U name. So that's uh, Linux. I could do uname dash A, and that gives me all the information about this particular EC2 instance. So there's a lot of really, really cool things that we can do as it pertains to So there's a lot of really, really cool things that we can do as it pertains to querying and uh, consuming and interacting against different services in AWS. And this is a small sip, and I'll provide a link to the full reference of all the different services and all the different ways that we can permeate to them. So that's what I had today. Stay tuned for another edition coming up soon. And thank you so much. And Donna developers, let me know what you think about this. Be sure to like and subscribe. Let me know what sort of content you'd like to see and what sort of things that you're building on AWS. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day.